Hi, I'm Dustin Harder and this is The Vegan Roadie. If you take a look around me, you'll see we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. I'm delighted to bring you season three of The Vegan Roadie from Italy. First stop today is one of the most historical and tourist-driven destinations in Sicily, Terramina. Because Terramina is bustling with tourists, I've discovered here that the food is accessible on anyone's terms. Restaurants are used to serving people from all over the world, pleasing all sorts of diets. If you want something plant-based, no problemo. They even just opened a 100% plant-based gelato shop, Il Gelato Bio Vegan. Now, before I leave Terramina and start to explore all that Sicily has to offer, I have to try some Sicilian Granita, a water ice that just so happens to be naturally vegan. We'll find out on this journey that it's very common for a lot of things to be naturally vegan. Bambar is the place for Granita in Terramina, serving up the traditional lemon flavor along with a wide variety of different flavors according to the season. Hits the spot. I'm so excited to see Italy for the first time and have you join me. But let's get a move on, eh? I'm the vegan roadie and I have one mission, to keep it vegano while on the go. things off on the small island of Ortigia. Ortigia is the historical center of Syracuse. It's a small island separated by a narrow body of water connected to the mainland by two bridges. It's a huge stop for tourism, entertainment, and shopping. I was told the first thing I had to do was grab myself a Seltz. The Seltz, a local drink, is similar to a lemon soda made up of sparkling water, salt, and juice from Sicilian lemons. Refreshing. Now, I could use some guidance in town today, and a good friend of mine happens to be visiting Ortigia as well, so let's meet up with her and find out what the good eats are in town. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one, the only, Miyoko Shinner. Dustin. Hello, darling. Now listen, what is it that you love the most about Sicily? You oh, have to tell me. Okay, how about the rustic charm and the passion of the people? Fantastic, I love it. Well, I know you've traveled a ton around Sicily, not just Sicily, but all of Italy, mm -hmm. on your own and also with Vegan Travel Club, but can you help me get around a little bit on my first day? Si, sí, con piacere. Oh, tell us what that means. Okay, well it just means of course, with pleasure. How about if we start, are you hungry? I'm starving. With the amazing arancini. These are these fried rice balls. Oh, they're so good. Stuff with pistachios, all sorts of things. And I know the perfect spot. Fantastic. You ready to go? Let's go. All right, andiamo. <laughs> Arancini balls are stuffed rice balls, coated with breadcrumbs and then deep fried. They're usually filled with a ragu of meat and tomato sauce, mozzarella and peas. Arancini are said to have originated in 10th century Sicily, at a time when the city was under Arab rule. We stopped into a small corner shop simply called Arancini Gluten Free. Mmm, they Ar look so good. They look so good. Okay, this is street food, Sicilian style. Arancino, arancini, plural. And we've got the Italiana. Okay. And then we've got the pistacchio, because pistachios are grown regionally here, okay. near uh, this place called Bronte. Oh, right. So yeah, this is, mm. Locally sourced. Locally Looks sourced. amazing. I know. And you know, there's no forks, because it's street food, street so you do it with your hands. With your hands. Ready? Okay. Mm. Well, they said that they're baked, not fried. They're baked, not fried. It's and it's vegan. They've got all these vegan options here, vegan and gluten free, coated with a with a polenta. But you know what? We can't eat all of this because we got a lot more to eat. We got to be on our way. All right, let's move along. Miyoko explained that many meals in Italy just so happen to be vegan because the base ingredients are plant based from the get go. But hardcore vegan travelers, or maybe even picky or particular eaters, might enjoy where we stop next. The menu at Just Veggie is straightforward. Okay, so I brought you here because when I travel, I think it's always fun to see what that country's take is on our most popular food. Sure. So you're gonna try burgers, okay. sandwiches, a la Italiana. All right, let's check out the All menu. All right, let's check it out. Burgers, salads, sandwiches, and fries make up the simple menu at Just Veggie. They even have a meal combo with fries, a sandwich, and fresh pressed juice. 
an interesting gluten-free option with a rice cake for the bun, and a wonderful platter of sliders that Miyoko and I sampled. Now Miyoko, I know you've got other stuff to show me, so I want some like mm. vegan, like authentic vegan Italian oh, yeah. food and a place where we can go maybe get a couple cocktails oh. or something with nightlife. Like what do you got in mind? I know exactly the place for you and it's just around the corner. Fantastic. <laughs> The Moon Ortigia is a bar and restaurant with a sleek, lively ambiance and the walls are covered with art from local artists. The joint comes to life at night, full of fun, funk, and art. It's an enjoyable hangout, not just for the tourists, but also the locals. So Dustin, I had to bring you here because not only do they have fabulous cocktails, but it's the only place in Ortigia with an all-vegan menu, and it is absolutely spectacular. First up was the spaghetti carbonara with a chickpea and turmeric cream sauce and smoked tofu, topped with an almond parmesan. Okay, there we go. And smoky. Mm-hmm. Mm. Smoky. Mm. Oh my god, it's a perfect combination. It's perfect. It balances mm. out just perfectly. Oh my god. I could eat plate after plate of this. I am going to eat plate after <laughs> plate of this. The Siracusana is a local dish, usually made with anchovies. Seaweed takes its place at Moon, along with fresh cherry tomatoes, olives, and capers. I'm getting right. some seaweed here. I want some of everything. Um, there's the creaminess, but then mm -hmm. like a nice little like tanginess to it. Well, mm -hmm. and the flavor of the sea mm -hmm. really comes through. Like yeah. there really is some yeah. seafood in here. Yeah, just by using the seaweed mm. though. So there's not seafood wow. in there. They even have a raw option. Great for days when you want to find the balance between indulging and keeping it light. Their raw spaghetti is made up of zucchini noodles tossed with a raw tomato sauce and topped with a decadent cashew cream. Full of flavor, rich and satisfying. Perfecto. As Moon Artesia is a hot spot to hang out, the drinks at the bar are no second thought. I ordered the Nepatella Martini with a marrow made with wild mint and local lemons mixed with tangeray. Miyoko picked the Barbarita with beetroot juice, tequila, triple sec, lemon, and orange salt. All right, Miyoko, I have to run. But before I do, I have to tell you about Miyoko's latest contribution to the cookbook world, The Homemade Vegan Pantry. It's absolutely on my top five of vegan cookbooks. You have to get it. To find out more about Miyoko, her books, and her cultured artisan vegan cheese, check out miyokoskitchen.com. Miyoko, thank you for helping me dip my vegan toe into the Sicilian kiddie pool. A toast to you. Toast. What a treat to get to hang with Miyoko for a bit. I've now moved on to Catania, located on the southeast coast of Sicily at the foot of Mount Etna, the largest active volcano in Italy. Maybe we'll get to take a peek later on, but for now, I've got a meeting with a woman who has been organizing the vegan movement in Sicily. Lucia Panisi has been on the vegan crusade, creating a detailed guide for vegans and the veg curious in Sicily through her website, VegCecilia.it. Lucia directs locals and tourists to vegan options throughout Sicily. VegCecilia.it not only highlights vegan food, but also bars, schools, and vegan specific shopping options. Why was it important for you to create this? My lifestyle choice pushed me to open a resource of uh, all vegan. With some assistance and helpful advice from Lucia, I was on my way. Be sure to visit VegCecilia.it when you plan your Sicily trip. First place I wanted to try was a great joint with something for everyone called dolcezza, which means sweetness. And they've got lots of sweets to offer, but they also have some savory eats, burgers, seitan cutlets, and salads. Let's take a look. Bar Dolcezza was originally opened by the mother of chef Tomestically Cascuna in 1984. 
as domestically took over the business, he started trying to recreate healthier versions of his mother's original menu. In 2014, he started incorporating plant-based versions, and today, the menu is almost 100% vegan. For a savory item, I had to try the fried bomb, wouldn't you? A pizza roll with arugula, black olives, and house-made soy mozzarella made of soy yogurt, potato starch, and sunflower oil, rolled up into a pastry dough and fried until light golden and crispy. Oh, that cheese is so creamy and delicious. I want some more, but let's move on to some sweets. For the sweets, you have to try a traditional Sicilian settevia cake. The cake has seven layers, starting with a cookie layer, followed by chocolate mousse, whipped cream, and chocolate ganache, repeated once more with the same layers. Vegan gelato comes in several flavors. On my visit to Bar Dolcezza, the offerings were strawberry, pistachio, chocolate, hazelnut, and vanilla. And Chef Domestically is a master when it comes to recreating the perfect vegan cannoli. Using the traditional tube-shaped shell of fried pastry dough, he coats the insides with chocolate and fills them with a decadent house-made cream. This cream takes the place of the customary filling that usually consists of goat's milk ricotta. Forno. So good. Best cannoli I've ever had. I could have stayed at Bar Dolcezzo all day long, but I had to bid farewell to the chef and the friendly staff and make my way onto the next restaurant. The team here at Haiku are extremely proud and put a lot of hard work into the dishes they create with a focus on creating beautiful plates that are 100% vegan all the time. Haiku Integrale Biologico Vegano, or roughly translated, Haiku Totally Organic Vegan, was the first all-plant-based restaurant in Catania, opened by Gabriella Buglisi in 2002. She holds a high passion for creating vegan foods that are delicious to all of her customers, no matter if they are vegan or not. And the setting is peaceful, with a picturesque outdoor patio shaded by a fig tree, allowing you to enjoy your meal with your friends and family on even the hottest of Sicilian summer days. Vegan is, uh, is enjoying life, is enjoying senses. The offerings on the menu at Haiku are centered around the idea of having something for everyone, giving the items a traditional Sicilian flair and global inspiration. I'm told the antipasto misto grande is the menu item to order when you come here. Let's find out why. Gabriella, the antipasto misto grande, tell me about it. Oh, this is very good. It is a big, big plate. It's very delicious. It's like a beautiful uh, voyage in the, in the world uh, of taste. Globally inspired with flavors from around the world, it's easy to see why this is a crowd pleaser. Gabriella made sure to pick one of her favorite wines for me to enjoy with my meal, Pericone, a red Italian grape that is grown right here in Sicily. Seeing as how this food is inspired from regions all over the world, of course I had to have a dish that was recognized as a Sicilian dish, a local staple. I was not disappointed when I was served the pasta alla pistacchio, creamy and decadent made with garlic, olive oil, and pistachios from Bronte, a local town in Catania. Outstanding. Not just a vast menu, Haiku also offers a supply of vegan goods and health supplies with a small storefront. After your meal, you can stock up on all of your plant-based needs. It's worth noting here that they offer cooking classes so you can get a hands-on experience and make your own food. But if that's not your style, no problem. You can take a look at their very diverse menu and I'm certain you'll find something that's just for you.
La Cucina de Calori, the kitchen of colors, lives up to its name and offers a wide variety. I can promise you, you'll be satisfied with every bite. La Cucina de Calori is the place to go if you are looking for delicious, fresh, and organic food. Owned and operated by a wonderful couple, Salva Pistorio and Giuseppe Cavallero. Service is always friendly and Salva and Giuseppe and their team are environmentally conscious folks. It's a win-win all around, if you ask me. This is really a great place for healthy, delicious, organic, and vegan food. It's centrally placed in Catania, making it easy to get to, even just a short walking distance from the historical center. Salva went to work and prepared one of their most popular offerings, the vegetable panella free. Chopping up a variety of seasonal vegetables, including greens, carrots, zucchini, and cabbage mixing them with chickpea flour and water, including some zest from a verdello, a green lemon. The green lemon is a lemon that is actually ripe when green and in season for this time of year in Sicily. After mixing everything together, the batter was fried into little pancakes until golden and crisp. Delicioso! Giuseppe lovingly prepared a plate of their raw chocolate cake made with dates, cashews, cacao, vanilla, maple syrup, coconut, and pistachios topped with fresh blueberries and a syrup made of a local fruit known as a nona. The energy at this restaurant was so charming and friendly, I was sad to say goodbye. But I was running out of time in Sicily and I had just a couple more stops to make. Moving onward to the city of Modica. Modica is the city of chocolate. We're also going to do the new vegan roti segment here, cooking with the familia. But before we get to that, I've got to get my hands on some chocolate. I stopped into the most famous of chocolate makers in Modica, established in 1880, Antica Dolceria Bonjuto. Modica chocolate is rich, dark, and crumbly, made in the traditional ways of the Aztec chocolate methods, using only three ingredients, cacao beans, cocoa butter, and sugar. Today, Anita Dolceria Bonjuto has a wide variety of bars and treats to choose from that have been embellished from the original three ingredients. The first of these flavors were vanilla and cinnamon, but have now branched out into more unique offerings like cardamom, orange, and white pepper. Beyond bars, they offer many things like cocoa mixes, teas, and chocolate liqueurs. My favorite was the pepper-infused liqueur. I purchased a traveler's variety box of the bars to take home to my friends and family, and I was on my way. I'm so excited to join the Passanante family here today at their restaurant, the Singola. The Singola is a true oasis. When you're lucky enough to sit at a table outside, you can catch a gentle breeze that breaks up the humidity from the city down below. Many of the products they use are grown right here in their garden at the Singola. The Passanantes have a passion for food, community, and Italy. The menu is influenced by the culture and local delicious produce. TripAdvisor reviews across the board call the food exceptional and the ambiance beautiful. You don't need to be vegetarian or vegan to enjoy this place. The food stands up for itself. The food is, uh, the food is very special because the ecological footprint is very low because everything is local. You, you eat Sicily in your plate, only Sicily. Singola is run by super couple Roberta Trabistone and Pasquale Passanante. Together they create dishes of high vibrational cuisine, elevating local ingredients to offer plant-powered plates that wow even the most skeptical of vegan cuisine. Roberta and Pasquale opened Singola seven years ago and are very strict about using only the freshest and local ingredients available, cultivating almost all of their herbs in their garden that surround the property. Chef Pasquale, can I put this together with you? Yeah. Right, great. So let's do it. How do we do this? Ravioli with the ham cheese okay. on um, Hokkaido pumpkin cream. Fantastic. With eggplant. And how do you say it in Italian? 
Ravioli con formaggio di canapa su crema di Hokkaido. The pasta is all handmade, so you're making the pasta all in-house, all handmade. Yeah, that's for the big part. Yes, yes, and so delicious. So the first step in this, I would think, is probably making your cheese, which you make cheeses all the time. So to do that, you've got your hemp seeds. Exactly. And then you're going to soak the hemp seeds. Over the night, dry them out. In Italy, this basket is also used for normal cheese. Then uh, this will be used like uh, filled uh, ravioli. Cut an eggplant. We uh, dry with salt. Uh, we prepare a cream uh, cooking the pumpkin uh, with just a little bit of white wine. And then we're going to put it in the blender and make a cream out of it with a little more olive oil, right? Exactly. Oh. So we're sauteing the carrots and the eggplant, then mixing that up with the ravioli when the ravioli is done, and we plate it on top of that delicious and gorgeous pumpkin sauce, and you've got your... Ravioli with the hemp cheese on uh, Hokkaido cream. We sat down around the table with Pasquale and Roberta's family to enjoy the meal. Handmade pasta filled with fresh vegan cheese and herbs served with vibrant seasonal vegetables. Now these flavors were unlike any ravioli I had ever tasted. I felt so welcome around this table enjoying food created with compassion and love. I love Roberta and Pasquale's food because it's made with love. Not just ravioli, Pasquale and Roberta put together some other treats that were offered currently on their autumn menu. A mashed fava bean soup, or maca de fave, with porcini mushrooms. Mushrooms are only in season two to four weeks out of the year. I was so happy I was around during this time to enjoy them. What I love about Roberta is their passion, but more about it's their determination also, the drive she has. And perhaps my favorite, a spin on the classic arancini, a beetroot arancini, or rapa rosa arancino stuffed with beetroot and house-made almond cheese, served with guacamole made from Sicilian avocados. And for dessert, Roberta offered up her special cannoli, much lighter than the traditional cannoli, using flour, water, and white wine for the fried shell that was stuffed with a simple yet decadent almond sweet cream. After an unforgettable cooking experience and a family meal I'll never forget, it was time to bid farewell. Ci vediamo! See you again. As you can bet, I'll return to Singola when I find my way back to Modica again and again. But you know, I wasn't going to leave you hanging without something to make for yourselves at home. Let's go back to my Airbnb for the five ingredient challenge. Today we're going to make a quick version of the dish we just saw at Haiku, the pasta alla pistacchio. I love this dish because it comes together so easily. Your five ingredients are half cup roasted, salted, and shelled pistachios, half cup olive oil, one clove of garlic, one pound pasta of choice, and crushed walnuts. They use penne pasta when they make this dish at Haiku and everywhere else I had it, but I love gemelle pasta, so I'm gonna use that. Pick a pasta you love the most. Add the pistachios, garlic, and olive oil to a blender with some salt to taste. I start with a quarter teaspoon because the pistachios are already salted. Blend everything until just combined. It's okay for this sauce to be thicker. It's not supposed to be creamy and smooth. There'll still be little chunks of pistachios left and that's what you want. Cook the pasta until al dente. Reserve a quarter cup of the cooking water and then drain the pasta. Combine the sauce with prepared pasta and toss until the pasta is coated. If needed, add the reserved cooking water one tablespoon at a time just to make the pasta less dry. You'll need only about two to four tablespoons. Transfer the pasta to serving plates and topped with crushed walnuts. A taste of Sicily in your own home. You must put the city of Catania on your list so you can try this made with those local Bronte pistachios. But for now, this will have to do. Go to veganroti.com to get the recipe and show me your recreations on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and tag me at the TheVeganRoti. 
And for even more vegan roadie recipes, be sure to get a copy of my new book, The Simply Vegan Cookbook, available at Amazon.com and everywhere books are sold. Kale it! I've had my fill of food for now, but I know that won't last long. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Sicily with me. Be sure to click subscribe and share the Vegan Roadie YouTube channel with everyone that you can, any way that you can. Remember that active volcano I was talking about? This is Mount Edna. She covers an area of 459 square miles, making her by far the largest active volcano in Europe. I'm gonna put my walking shoes on and explore a little. I hope you'll join me for the next episode in Naples. Until then, keep on cooking and remember, it's nice to be nice. Dustin Harder's shirts designed by Lois Eastland, NYC. Presented in partnership with Vegan Travel Club. I'm Giovanni. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs>